you look at people standing at the bus stop for 10 minutes waiting for the bus. They get uncomfortable with being with themselves. So they pull out the phone and they start engaging with something. Because right. to actually be with you is probably one of the most challenging things you can face in life. Because if you're not feeling well, what do you do? You go online, right? And the whole purpose of the monastery is to you strip everything and everyone away from a person and they're only left with themselves. You give them two sets of robes, put them in a little hut, and you go like, here, live with yourself. And it becomes extremely painful because there's no escape. And so what did you start to learn about yourself? Everything. You see all the beautiful things about yourself and you see all the ugly things about yourself. And the f way to survive right off the bat is to learn to accept you for who you are. And if you don't accept yourself for who you are, you will never make it in the monastery. You just really have to put one, two arms around yourself and go, this is me. Accepting doesn't mean condoning. It's just acknowledging that this is where you are right now. You're made up of good things and not so good things, and it's okay. And I always looked at myself as a building under construction. There's still work going on, the scaffolding, there's tools lying around, the nails. But it's a work in progress. And, and that's the first thing you have to do as a monk, is accept yourself for who you are. Because as soon as you go in, you're going to see everything. And if you don't accept yourself for who you are, you'll want to leave. Simplify your life. Everybody's so busy. Everybody's got a lot of things to do. We don't actually have a lot of things to do. And we, we don't have priorities in life. Most people don't have clear priorities in life. You know, I, for me, my goal is to simplify my life, simplify the number of people in my life and simplify the number of things in my life. We only have a finite amount of energy each day, right? But every year we have more people in our lives. Is that a fair statement? More Facebook friends, you have more people you're connected with, but your energy stays the same. So that's not a proportionate growth. If your energy is increasing every year proportionately with the number of things and people in your life, then we don't have to talk about this. But your energy level is the same. But the amount of people and things in your life are growing almost exponentially. So whereas that doesn't work. So for me, it's always about simplifying first the people and things into your life, into who and what's most important. Taking that finite energy that you have each day and focusing, second step is learning how to focus and concentrate that finite amount of energy into the people and things that truly matter. Now you start to create a lifestyle that you actually love because you're invested into people and things that matter. And the byproduct of that is happiness. It's happiness is not a goal. And if you ask most people, what do you want in life? They say, I want to be happy. I always say you should never pursue happiness. Don't pursue happiness. Pursue a lifestyle where the byproduct of that lifestyle is happiness. So happiness comes as a byproduct. I spend time with the people that I love. What is my byproduct? I'm happy. I spend time with people I don't like. I'm not happy. So don't pursue happiness. Pursue a lifestyle that gives happiness. But in order to then to pursue that lifestyle, you need to be clear what you want in life. What's your purpose in life? And people don't know this because they don't spend any time with themselves. There you go. Simple question. What's wow. your purpose in life? No idea. What color is your tie, Brian? I think it's red. It's red, right? I mean, not very difficult to answer. But people don't know because they never spend any time with themselves. I always say, you know, people, people make time for everything and everyone else in their life, but they never make time for themselves. If you go up to someone who you know and say like, would you like to catch up for coffee? Let's, let's do coffee. They're like, oh, I can't this week, but I can next week. How about Thursday, 7 p.m.? Perfect, I'll see you at this place. When was the last time someone is willing to take time out of their life to spend time with themselves? So if you want to get to know yourself, you need to spend time with yourself. But in a, in a way that you can inquire, right? So people say to me things like, oh, I walk my dog in the park, that's my time with myself. And we're like, no, it's not. That's you walking the dog. And we go like, oh, I, you know, I go for a jog, that's my alone time. No, that's you jogging, avoiding traffic, watching where you're stepping so you don't trip and fall over. Spending time with yourself is sitting down, closing your eyes, not interacting with the outside world and actually going inside and having that conversation, the same conversation I would have with you and say like, Hey, Brian, so where, where did you grow up? You know, you said California, do you like to surf? No, hate the water, love the water. Tell me, right? Mm. 
and people don't have that conversation because they don't have that conversation with themselves. They don't end up knowing what they want in life because they don't know what they want in life. They can't focus that finite amount of energy, and then they don't live a lifestyle that brings them happiness. Most people end up being happy, unhappy.